ancestors. We gather for worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. A very warm welcome to all who join us online on this, the second Sunday of Lent. It is good to have you with us. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. Falsely accused and for us sinners 
to the Romans. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist, Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said. So numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trans trespasses and was raised for our justification. For the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Praise to you, Christ, King of eternal The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory be to thee, O Lord. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. 
He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and ashamed of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Just prior to going on a parish, parish pilgrimage to the Holy Land in 1988, I remember seeing a variety of pictures of the Good Friday procession along the Via Dolorosa in Jerusalem, with one of the Franciscans carrying the large wooden cross. At one level, it was impressive, but at another level, it was just too tidy. Tidy because the cross was always neat, perfectly formed. Tidy because onlookers were just that, onlookers. Of course, the large piece of timber carried by Christ would have been just that, a roughly hewn piece of wood used for crucifixions before and afterwards. The upright would have been there on Calvary, waiting for the beam and the condemned to arrive. In Jerusalem, I found myself arranging our own stations of the cross, starting from the Ecce Homo convent, the traditional site of the trial before Pilate, ending at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, the site of Calvary and the tomb. The tidiness of the pictures I'd seen just a couple of months before was replaced by people jostling around us as we went through the crowded streets and as they went about their daily business, pushing past us as we went from station to station. There was suddenly something of a sense of what it might have been like nearly two millennium earlier. Those two images are important as we consider that command to take up our own cross. For very rarely is there anything simple or literal in the way we have to do it. In other words, how many of us literally find ourselves being crucified? So how do we carry our cross? For most of us, carrying our cross is about challenge, and challenge can affect us in different ways. On a personal level, we are challenged in our own lives, challenged to do better, to do our own very best. For all of us, this time of pandemic has been more challenging than we could possibly have imagined. And we will continue to find it challenging for a little while yet. We've had all sorts of experiences. We've missed out on things, on family or friends. We struggled with physical, emotional or mental health. We may well have struggled with working from home we may well have struggled with homeschooling our children. 
we may well have found ourselves doing things outside our normal comfort zone. It might be that we found some people difficult, awkward, or we find getting on with them just plain challenging. Throughout these last 12 months or so, and in different ways, each one of us has carried our own cross. And there may well have been those times in this period when we've been a Simon of Cyrene, when we've helped to carry the cross of someone else, be that friend or family member. In all of this, there's the issue of God being with us in all of these various situations. God calls us to something, to embrace a situation which we may well find challenging or difficult. But on those occasions, when he calls us out of our comfort zone, to be in a place or situation which we'd prefer to steer clear of, he doesn't simply push us away into that zone. He journeys with us. For many people, change can be something of a challenge. And again, there can be a real sense of God taking, calling us to take risks, to take risks for the gospel, of moving out of those places where we feel warm, comfortable, safe and secure, under our, as it were, theological duvet. In a few months, that will happen for those to be ordained at Petertide, for Helga, for Francesca, and of course for Daniel. A hugely exciting time for each one of them, and for us as a parish as we prepare to receive Daniel as curate, but also a time of being open to what the Spirit is saying to them, and by extension to us. Church, we're often told, should be about stability, continuity, of things being as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Change is something of a dirty word. The pandemic has ensured that change, that the church already feels very different. We've had to find new ways of engaging with folk, adjusting our worship, new ways of using the building, and yes, new ways of having to cope with new aspects of technology. Of course, the message of the Gospel, of the dynamic and life-changing intervention in our affairs by God in the person of his Son, Jesus Christ, is constant and doesn't change. Our very encounter with God here in the Eucharist, in prayer, in our reading of scripture, in creation and in each other, should encourage us to open our hearts and minds to the changing power of God working in, through and amongst us. For some, there will be a degree of fear and the challenge of change. Yet if we're not changed by our encounter with the living God, then I think then we should be worried. too often as Christians we tend to assume and hope that our Christian journey will be easy, that life will be the proverbial bowl of cherries. Well we know that that's just not the case. 2020 taught us that. We're not promised an easy ride and we do walk a path which can seem long and full of obstacles, although of course most of the time it is a journey of total joy. We're also challenged by denying ourselves, something which we may well be doing this Lent, perhaps in giving up alcohol, biscuits, chocolate, or something more modern such as giving up social media for Lent, as a number of my clergy friends have done. But there's a different way of understanding it as well. In the Hebrew scriptures, the Satan, equated with various entities, both human and angelic, entities who tested the faith of humans in God. 
by the time of the very early church, the Satan had become Satan, the chief of the rebellious fallen angels. We don't know what form Satan took in the desert, but we do know that Jesus recognized it as being in opposition to God and therefore him. What Jesus is saying to those around him and to you and me is that we're going to have to resist that inner voice which tries to distract us and pull us away from God and he warns us that resisting won't be easy. We each have our own temptations and failures and these are what we need to, to deny ourselves. Denying ourselves in such a way may well be particularly difficult yet we need to recognize them and bring them to God asking for forgiveness and healing and for the grace to begin again. Our circumstances may well lead us to fear that life at present is something of a permanent Good Friday that we are always picking up and carrying our cross but then as the gospel writers remind us in the passion death and resurrection it's just not possible to get to Easter without experiencing Good Friday today's gospel passage may well at one level seem to be particularly difficult or painful. Jesus is speaking in a way which may well seem just a little bit too brutal for our own modern liking. Yet it's in carrying our own cross in whatever form that takes that we begin to experience the changing power of God's Spirit. Ultimately, as Christians, we have to place the same trust in God the Father as Jesus did. We need to recognize that however difficult and challenging life may well be at times, and yes, now is one of those times, we do not experience those challenges alone, but in the company of God. Just as Simon of Cyrene journeyed with Christ along the Via Dolorosa, so Christ journeys with us. For we also know that on those occasions when we recognize that we're carrying our cross, whatever form it takes, that we also remember that we do so in the company of the one who carried his cross to Calvary for us. I believe in one God, the Father of all Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the very best of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered <coughs> and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe in the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, 
I acknowledge your baptism for the remission of sins, and I hope for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Let us pray to the Lord who guides us through the wilderness of temptation into our fellowship with him and with one another. Heavenly Father, during this season of Lent, help us to keep focused on you. Speak to us, show us where we need to change and give us grace to do so that we may live lives that please and honour you. Lord, in thy mercy, Lord, we thank you for the church community here at All Saints. We pray that we will continue to feel connected with you and with one another, and that we will continue to grow as a church, and that will grow further when we can meet together in person again. We pray for all those who serve the church in any way, that you will strengthen and guide them in all that they do. Lord, in thy mercy, Lord, we pray for our bishops, Christopher and Jonathan, and for our Archdeacon Moira, that you will guide and help them as they support the churches in this diocese. This week we pray for the churches and clergy, particularly in the de Deanery of West Lewisham, that they will know your guidance and encouragement this week. Lord, in thy mercy. Yeah. Father, we thank you for all those who serve in Parliament, and pray that they will act with integrity and wisdom. We pray also for the Queen for good health and energy, and that you will protect her and her family, especially the Duke of Edinburgh, who continues to receive hospital treatment. Lord, in thy mercy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those working in frontline occupations. This week we think particularly of those in the police force, and pray that you will protect them just as they seek to protect us. Give them wisdom and help them to have good relationships with the communities that they serve. We pray too for those working in healthcare and especially this week for those involved in distributing the vaccine for COVID. And we pray that the, those who need the vaccine the most will receive it, both in this country and in countries where there is financial need. Lord, in thy mercy, Lord Jesus, we pray for those who we know personally who are suffering or sick or who have lost loved ones re recently, especially those who have been affected by coronavirus. We also bring to you the names of those who have recently departed, Benjamin Davy, Ada Lowton, Albert John, Robert Hall, and for those whose anniversaries of death fall at this time, including Celia Cady, Winifred Haywood, Arthur Munden, Richard Cavendish, Peter Hall Green and Catherine, Kathleen Knight. We bring all these names before you in prayer. Please comfort the bereaved and heal the sick and bring hope to all. Lord in thy mercy. Yeah. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for thy sake of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. Let us offer a sign of Christ's peace.
Grant, O Lord, that as we lift up these earthly gifts in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, so we may share in the heavenly banquet of his eternal life, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty Father, through Jesus Christ your Son. For in these forty days you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer, and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendor of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast, with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy, and join with saints and angels forever praising you and singing. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in memory of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it 
in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and passion until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with blessed Mary and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours. O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Trusting in the compassion of God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ, Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in our faith. Jesus is the Lamb of God, who taketh away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his Son. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you see that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <coughs> the notices are on uh, both the website and on the Facebook group as well. Um, just to draw a couple of things to your attention. Um, the parish giving scheme um, goes live tomorrow on the 1st of March. Uh, of course, it's, you're at any point able to sign up for it, particularly if you haven't uh, been giving regularly through either envelopes or standing order in the past. We do encourage you to do that. Um, it's a good way of ensuring uh, a regular income, particularly in these difficult and challenging times. Two weeks today uh, is uh, Mothering Sunday and it's the day when, all being well, we will gather once again here in church uh, for uh, Parish Mass with All Age Address at 10 a.m. Um, as before, uh, please do uh, book if you want to come along uh, through the church office or, of course, uh, through the uh, little form which is available on the website. Tomorrow is the feast of Dewey Sant, and, and this evening cor uh, there will be not choral evening song. There will be sung evening prayer uh, for uh, Saint David. <coughs> so there'll be a slight Welsh tone uh, to the proceedings this evening. Nothing to do with the triple crown, of course. Would you please stand for the blessing? The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross, and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, and remain with you this Lent and always. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.